It's a stunning day, lovely day for a glider. Gliders have come of age in 2017, believe it or not. 2018 is going to be a big year for autonomous gliding. I think that the sun is very much rising on solar drones. First, a quick look at two amazing platforms. History always helps us to frame where we are now. In our world, the air environment and NASA Helios has been the one to beat. With a wingspan of nearly 200 feet, it flew to 96,863 feet in August of 2001. That was an official world record altitude for non-rocket powered aircraft. How far ahead was Helios? Well, it had a fuel cell on board, that's how far. For gliding types, it flew at a glide ratio of 31 to 1, and electronic engineers might like to know it had 62,120 individual solar cells on it. Development flights, which led to the World Altitude Record flight in the summer of 2001, were flown from the US Navy's Pacific Missile Range facility on the Hawaiian island of, here we come, we can get this wrong, of Kauai. That site was chosen due to its more equatorial latitude, minimal air traffic and restricted test range airspace over the Pacific Ocean. Part of that thought was she'll return to it. It's sort of the point of this video. For some reason, I'm not sure why, the US HAPS, that's High Altitude Persistent Pseudo Satellite Scene, for this is what they're going to be really, has gone quiet. The void was filled by Blighty and a team that rather delightfully described the launch technique of the Kinetic Zephyr as several blokes and real ale. I've said it before and will say it again, technology that looks simple is normally very hard. In a 2008 demonstration for the US military, the Zephyr 6 flew beyond the official world record for the longest duration unmanned flight. However, its 82 hour flight at 61,000 feet did not qualify because no FAI officials were around. Wind the clock forward to 2010 and the FAI were in attendance when Zephyr 7 flew unrefueled from the 9th of July to the 23rd of July. That's 336 hours, 22 minutes and 8 seconds to be exact, at an altitude of 70,000 feet. I was told that they ran out of range time. Part of that thought, we shall come back to it. Manned solar aircraft are also a thing. The round the world brightling solar impulse made international headlines and well deserved they were too. But I have a soft spot for the Sunseeker Duo, a platform that can very obviously be converted to RPA or OPV operation. It follows in my mind the if it looks right adage. Anyway, it's much larger than our usual fare at SUS News. In our space, one that I've been watching is the French Solar Glider Project, and they've managed a 400 kilometer flight that took 10 and a half hours. The thing that held them back was the ability to fly to a greater height and fly into darkness, fly beyond tw civil twilight as they were flying a model aircraft. It's an amazing achievement on basically a hobbyist budget. Just think what they might achieve if they had free access to restricted airspace for their testing. So I think now it's not if solar powered drones are practical, but how to allow them to crawl the countryside during daylight hours and gather terabytes of low altitude, high resolution imagery. Separate lift thrust and other VTOL platforms have been the darling of 2017. I am looking forward to outwardly simpler glider based solar assisted systems moving into the market in 2018. I'll put a link to the Solar Glider project below and I'd be happy if you liked, subscribed and did all the usual YouTube stuff that you're supposed to do. And even if you like, tell me what a clown I am in the comments for multi-rotors will always rule the world. Don't forget to tune in to our Tuesday live streams at 2100 GMT. All the best for now.